That's the second biggest funky head I've ever seen. So let's look at it. A little too close for comfort in case it wants to eat me. I'll just save it the trouble and enter the mouth myself. Or not. Talk to the face, talk to the hand. Is there a hand to talk to? The problem that we're going to see here is that everything I try to do that I think is a vaguely reasonable puzzle solution will not work. So I'm going to leave the screen and see what's over here. Now, there's nothing over here. Darn, I was hoping there was another screen that would give me something to work with. I already have everything I need to solve this puzzle, but I'm not getting the responses from the text parser that are leading me into the direction of throwing some glue on the fruit and sticking it in the mouth of this thing. See, that whole give fruit to face makes sense. Oh, and don't mind me cutting around, cutting out some of the footage here. I spent a lot of time wandering around in circles, not doing anything productive. I'm fixated on these totem poles, because I'm thinking that if you can push the pole or climb up it and pull the nose, that will trigger the mouth to open like a mechanical connection. But it's telling me I'm not close enough to the pole to push it. I'm right here. I'm right behind it. Push. And I'm thinking maybe it's the wrong direction, maybe I gotta push from over here, but no. Not that Roger's all that strong anyhow, he probably wouldn't be able to push it even if he could. So, let's push the pole. <laughs> Funny, you don't look Polish. I'm surprised that worked. Feed me, Roger. Okay, Little Shop of Horrors reference is nice, but it only somewhat helps me solve this puzzle, so feed me. Give me two face. You can't even have Roger get eaten. Okay, we're gonna get this whole sequence again. It would make sense that maybe Roger could climb in to the mouth. But it's not registering any of the, th <laughs> the ways that I'm trying to give the fruit to the face. Finally, a breakthrough. Put fruit in mouth. And you notice that little black square rectangle shape rhombus appearing on the side? It eats my fruit, and there's a door over there. It looks like a door, either that or a graphical glitch. Just not going to get him to gnaw on me. So the issue here is that it, it looked like I did something by giving him the fruit, but I can't really tell what. Was it a glitch? Was it actually just showing me, hey, there's a door over here that you can do something with? No. No. Uh, oh. So I put the glue in the mouth and realized <laughs> I did the wrong thing. I should have put the glue on the fruit, and then when he eats the fruit... There we go. Now I've got glue in the fruit. Now we'll eat it. Uh, wait, oh, no, not me. Uh, sorry, I meant put it in the face's mouth, not my face's mouth. Do this again. If we had been paying attention to the note in the man's hut, we would have realized the solution to this immediately. But if you don't read the note, there's not a lot of good feedback on this screen to really tell you that pole equals face. So we've got some fruit mushed up with glue, and now his jaws are glued shut. And now we're gonna go into the hole, where we'll probably die repeatedly. Yep, looks awfully deathy to me. And save, because yeah, I'm about to do some silly stuff, like jump across the... No, maybe not. Okay, now we're really going to do something brilliant. Going to look at the water. And we're going to drink it! Drinking alien water! Mm-mm-mm. Oh no, if you don't understand bathe, <laughs> that just concerns me about Roger, a janitor who can't bathe. Never mind me, arguing with the text parser again.
Hey, a halfway decent puzzle solution for once. Nice. Should just... What? I should just be able to walk across. Alright. Maybe not. Maybe walking is not a skill that Roger has yet mastered. Try again. Oh, and we should probably drink the water, get that point. And die of alien water disease. Okay. Save. Uh, it looked like I was on the board. What gives? Apparently gravity. Can't crawl across. Just gotta be careful. Yay! Save again. Dots. Dots on the floor. Footprints? Eh, not interesting. Oh, very interesting and to the point. Blah. Let's not get impaled by that. That is a bad spear to get impaled by. <laughs> I'm a saveaholic. Forgive me. Well, that's a better spear to get impaled by. Now, I could slow down the... Uh, the speed, but again, I'm forgetting that that's an option here. <laughs> so I'm just uh, maneuvering myself carefully through. Hooray! And now on to the next part where I'm going to fall and die. Now, I apologize. Ah! Ah! Uh, I apologize if I'm reading too fast. Partly it's because I'm only somewhat paying attention to the text on the screen, and part of it's that most of the things that are popping up are nice flavor, but not critically important to the plot or to the puzzle solutions. I'm trying to slow down for those important things and the funny things, but sometimes I still go a little fast, so I do apologize. But hey, pausing the video to read some text makes it interactive, like you're playing the game with me! Or not. This is a fine puzzle, and it's really just motion and blah, 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 blah. It's mostly just maneuvering Roger around here. There's not actually anything else to it, but not walking dumb-like. And again, slowing down the game speed would be tremendously helpful here. But I'm just... <laughs> um, yeah, just winging it. Sorry. We'll do this right this time. Ha-ha! Now, normally I'd recommend saving often in multiple slots. I generally keep game one, two, three, maybe four, and just cycle through them every time I save. And then when I get to a milestone, like, got through the spike floor section, or entered the cave with the cave bees, I save a big descriptive, descriptive section, and you don't care. Cave bees... Anyhow, if you do care, I save milestones. Gentle hum of their wings, and then keep a couple of short safe games. I'm babbling. I'm just... I'm trying to express some useful insight on saving games and playing adventure games, but doing a lousy job of it. So just ignore me. So we got gay bees. <laughs> Oops. Key card and pass card are not interchangeable. Of course, I can't get it here. Oh, sneak by the cave bees. Uh, okay. All right, they're not following me. <sighs> the dreaded cave bees. Okay, we're safe. Surrounded by you know, more green goo. And we'll pick up the pass card. Pass card. And push more random buttons. I 
the flashing one. More cave bees. <laughs> okay, so we've learned a little bit about salt. Blew. Salt will become important. What am I taking? Take, take work? I don't want to take any more work. That sounds delightful. It's a genuine Antarian slime devil! Yay! It's, it's my obligation to check out all of the goop on the floor. I'm sorry. Rats. Never know when a shard of glass would come in handy. Stop touching the goo! I still don't know what that thing is on the far left side of the room. It, it, is it a part of the cave that's sticking out? Is it a bag of meat? I mean, what is it? Okay, so I'll take a beaker from the shelf. Now we can do science! Yes, possessing scientific equipment automatically qualifies us to do science. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So this looks like a fun place to go. Open the door. Hope I don't fall down a pit walking through. Okay, cool. Don't want to be here yet. We'll come back. Now that I have a pass card, I can, okay, please, open some of the doors. Or maybe just one of the doors. Boo, dead body. Lots of stuff to do and see in this room, so I hope it looks pretty to you, because you're going to be seeing it for a while. Dun-dun-dun. All right, so we've got a murdered scientist who may have known too much. Not that we really go into it all that much as to what that might mean. Hooray, early puzzle solution. So something super strong killed him, and... Maybe it's just the way that I'm playing and I, I miss something, but I feel like that plot thread never fully gets resolved. I don't think they really tell you what it was that killed this poor doctor. Go faster! Although, again, I've not been terribly attentive this entire game. <laughs> run, Roger, run! That's good. You can at least turn it off after you're off of it. Okay, picking out some cartridges at random. You, well, I got lucky. Whoa. Insurance sales techniques. I know what we're going to use this for. Wildlife insurance is appropriate. Not that.